Welcome to this screencast on What's New in AppCode 2016.3. This is a significant release with a number of important improvements, and we're going to kick off by looking at Swift Free support. Now, Swift Free brought a large number of far reaching changes to the language. We've been hard at work, and we're pleased to say that we now have significant coverage here. There are more details on the page at the URL shown. There have also been some big improvements to performance, particularly in completions highlighting in large files with complex closures, and source kit inspections. So if you've had any issues with these in the past, then do give this release a try. Now for some demos of some new features. AppCode has long been able to automatically format your code and keep it formatted according to your own preferences. Well, this release brings several new formatting features, so let's take a quick tour of some of those now. First, we're going to look at colons. And here you can see some being used in type annotations, but the alignment doesn't look quite right. Now, simply hitting Alt Command L, the code is reformatted, and we can see how the colons have moved. But if that's not how we want it, we can open Preferences, and under Editor Code Style, there's a whole range of options for handling spaces. Under Other, we can specify behavior around commas, semicolons, and now colons. And you can see as we make changes that the preview sample reflects our choices. And now closures. Now we might write short closures like this one on a single line. But if we reformat, the default is to split across multiple lines. If we don't want that, we can set a preference. Again, this time under wrapping and braces. And we can say, keep simple blocks and closures in one line. And this time when we reformat, we see that no lines have changed. Now this is separate from when simple closures are passed as an argument. Here, if we reformat, the default is already to keep it on one line. But again, we can change that. Back in preferences, and this time, simple closure arguments in one line. So if we uncheck that and reformat, we'll see closure arguments split across lines too. Sometimes our function declarations can get quite long. An app code can show us this vertical bar to give us a hint that readability might be suffering, but it also gives us a way to automatically deal with this. So back in preferences and down to method function declaration parameters, we change from the do not wrap default to chop down if long. And now if we reformat the arguments, they're split across multiple lines. Now this looks a bit odd now because the arguments are not aligned properly. So we go back to preferences and check the align when multi-line option as well. And that should fix things nicely. And you probably noticed some other options there for what to do around parentheses. And note also that there's a similar set of options for when you call a method or function instead of declaring it. If letting is an important and common idiom in Swift, and you can often end up with several if lets on a single line. Again, this can lead to long, less readable lines, which extend beyond the right margin. So let's see what reformatting does here. Again, the default is to not wrap these lines, but we can control that back in preferences and down under condition clauses. We can make it chop down if long, and we'll keep a line when multi-line. So if we reformat now, we'll see the condition nicely split up and aligned and can clearly see each condition involved. Another common idiom in Swift is chaining a series of method calls. Once again, the default is not to wrap when reformatting. So let's change that under chained method calls. This time the line was not so long, so we'll say wrap always to force it and we'll check align when multi-line, and reformat, and now we can see the calls are split up and the method names are nicely aligned. Create from Usage is a powerful code generation tool that's been available for Objective-C for some time, and now it comes to Swift 2. With this feature, AppCode can automatically write code to declare constants, variables, methods and properties which don't yet exist, simply by using them. Let's try some examples. Here we have the start of a view controller. 
We want to add a view where we can supply the background color, width and height. So let's start coding as if we already have the supporting code. First we'll add a subview, and we'll get that by calling a method which we don't have yet. We want to pass it a background color, the width and the height. And now this is currently an error, but if we alt enter here, we can create either a method or a function. Either would be valid, and we're going to choose method. And now we have a method stub with argument types inferred. And it's even had a guess at naming the arguments. But of course, we can tab through to enter those manually. And then we can tab onto the method body. Now, starting here, let's return a variable that we haven't declared yet. Again, we can Alt Enter to bring up our intentions. And this time we have three possibilities. We're going to go with local variable. And we can choose let or var. The default is let, which is probably what you want most of the time. Now, let's give that a value. And we'll create a UI view. Give it a frame. We need to build a CG rect. Now we've been past the width and the height, but we don't have X and Y values yet. So again, let's refer to names that don't exist yet. Default X and default Y. We'll carry on and fill out the width and the height too. Now let's go back to that first missing variable. Alt enter again. And this time, we'll choose to create a property. Again, let or var. Give it a value. And the same for default Y. Finally, we just need to go back and fill out that background color. So let's do that now. And we finished our new method, with most of the supporting code being written for us. Now, when it comes to testing your code, App Code has a built in test runner. Well, this has now been extended to support user interface testing too. For this example, we're going to use the source code for the Brave browser, which you can find on GitHub. Now you see we have some UI tests here. To run these tests, we first need to select the test configuration. Now we can just hit Control R to run all the tests in that configuration. And down here we can see the output from the tests as they're running, as well as the current status over on the left. We can also filter this view to show or hide successful tests with this green icon. And with this orange icon, we can do the same with ignored tests. And we can sort the test results alphabetically or by duration. Now at this point, we have a failing test. To see the code for it, we just select the test and then hit Command Down Arrow to jump straight to the source code. And we can clearly see that in this case, it's just a typo in the string here, which is easy to fix. At this point, we just want to rerun only that test, which we can do with Control Shift R while we're in the test method. So that will run just this test again, which can save a lot of time with UI testing. In fact, this is context sensitive. So if we move the carrot outside the test method, but still in this test class, and hit Control Shift R again, it now runs all tests in this class. And by the way, this selective running works the same way with Control Shift D if we actually want to debug into the code rather than just running it. We can also get to a history of previous test runs. If we want to go back and see what state we were in before. And finally, we have an option to scroll the output pane to the stack trace or other relevant test logs when you select a test name. Next, semantic highlighting. This feature is new to all the languages that App Code supports. And the following examples will show Swift and Objective C, but it works to C and C as well. Now, sometimes we read code that has a number of different variables in play at once. It would be nice if we could more easily follow them. Well, now we can with semantic highlighting. Go to the editor preferences and under colors and fonts, language defaults, semantic highlighting, you can enable the option of the same name. And now, 
each different variable name gets its own unique color, helping you to follow its flow through the code. Version control integration next, and this has a number of new enhancements. First, the log view window has been reorganized so that the message detail pane is now on the right, leaving more vertical space for commit messages. Notice also that the commits are aligned on the left, even with some deep branching. Also, the tags and branch names have been moved to the right, but you can still see longer commit messages if you hover over them. Now, when you make a new commit, there's a new option for sign off, which can be very useful for some repository workflows. There's also a new context menu item, undo commit, which does exactly that. Now this is different to a soft reset because while the changes are still there, they've automatically been added to a new change list. As you can see, if you go to the commit again. And one more new feature for Git is a new remotes view. This lets you add, edit and delete new or existing remotes. If you're using C or C++, there have been many improvements to language support for recent standards. To show user-defined literals here, we're going to use Howard Hinnant's excellent date library, which gives us these date and year suffixes here. Well, now app code is aware of them too, and we can bring up quick docs for the operator, or we can jump to the definition right in the library code. And if we define our own operators like this one here, then we can also rename at any point to change the definition and all usages, just like we can with any other symbol. Next, C14 introduced the digit separator for use with numeric literals, making it easier to read these long numbers. And we're pleased to say this is now recognized by app code and no longer gets highlighted as an error. We've also improved overload resolution, including with variadic templates. We detect more ambiguous calls, and we've improved our code analysis. For example, we now support the scope guard idiom without warning about unused variables. And for C11, we now support usage of underscore generic, and we offer completions for a number of new C11 keywords. You'll be pleased to know the default font for menus and toolbars is now San Francisco, so app code will look right at home on your desktop. Now, of course, there are many more features, fixes, and improvements in this release, and the best way for you to find them all is to download a 30-day free trial. So, thanks for watching.